The darts take aim at Chicago this weekend, Saturday night, May 28th. It's the darts, mystery actions, and the rumors playing at everyone's favorite iniquitous den, Liars Club. Nicole Loren from the darts is here with me. And since we can't play music on a podcast, Nicole, I'm going to run with the standard issue darts descriptions. Garage punk rock girls will make your head slam and your feet shake. And then there's the music. If Elvira, <laughs> if Elvira and Wednesday Adams did shots of snake venom at a bachelorette party, that's the darts. You know how to tell your own story. <laughs> we had a little help with that one over the years, but yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty accurate description, I think. Well, the darts, the music is awesome. It's cheery. It's retro. It's also dark and literate. But I think the look and the vibe of the darts makes it really easy to love this band. There's a bandality. There's a there's a there's just a vibe to the darts. Thank you. Yeah. When um when we put it together, it just sort of took on a life of its own. But uh, we had this idea that we were we wanted to, you know, sort of shed all the other bands we've been in in the past. And so the concept was to uh, try and look like um you know, 1960s secretaries who had just thrown their dresses off and ran up on stage in their slips barefoot. That was the idea. Perfect. <laughs> so. Sold. There's the elevator pitch. Sold. <laughs> now, right before we got on, I saw you went on Instagram to say you're going to do this interview. Are you wearing a Sun Records top? I am. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Yes, I we went, we toured through uh, through Memphis, um, played at a really cool bar that we love. We played there a couple of times, actually, called uh DKDC, don't, don't, ask, don't care, don't ask, don't ask, don't care, <laughs> don't know, don't care. Anyway, um, it's a really cool little bar there. And uh, we stopped, of course, to do the obligatory Sun Records tour. And it was the coolest thing. They, they actually put our poster up in the recording booth and talked to us later and took a bunch of pictures. And they made us just feel like super awesome rock stars. And it was, the Sun people are really, really legit, legit, sincere people. They're very cool. See, I've only been to Memphis once, and I, I I regret never going in. I did the Graceland tour, which was pretty cool. But I remember I was driving down whatever street it was, and then I look out my left as I'm driving. I'm like, holy shit, that's Sun Records right it's there. It's right there. It's not this. It's like Motown. It's like this tiny thing that you could pass within a blink. And it's it's so epic. And, and it's, I mean, just, just like Motown, you go in there, and it's small, and it's all the original stuff. They have like Elvis's piano and uh, just all this cool stuff in there. That's just, um, it's amazing. Hey, you hear stories about people who go to Greece and they'll walk like the, the ruins of the Parthenon and they, they feel like they're in touch with history. I mean, for me driving by there, I thought, well, Elvis Presley walked in off the street into that building. How fucking yeah. cool is that? Anyway, I digress. We're here to talk about the darts for really, God's sake. Really, really cool. We can talk about the sun all day if you want. I'm fine with that too. <laughs> so Liars Club, again, Saturday, there's a Chicago connection. Uh, to the show, besides it being at Liars Club, Mary Rose of Mystery Actions is playing drums with the band. Correct. And another Chicago connection is that I grew up there. <laughs> so. Oh, I, I don't think I knew that. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I, grew I, up, um, I grew up in Lake Zurich, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. And uh, that's where I studied piano. And um, I used to have master classes down at Loyola University in the city. And um, when I was in high school and everything. And yeah, Chicago is my, my old stomping grounds. Okay, I just in my head, Arizona band. Yeah, well, I ended up here. Uh, I went to law school out in Tucson and ended up staying out here uh, for the long haul. But um, but Chicago is where it all started for sure. So how does it feel when you go back? Like, I, is it kind of thrilling when you, you're driving in? All of a sudden, you you see the skyline. You're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm back. It it never fails to hit me, you know, right in the heart. It. I mean, when you grow up, that's that's a big deal, but. My parents and I did a lot of road trips when I was a kid and just always driving back into that city and seeing like, you know, big magic kiss sign and like just stuff that, you know, like grabs you from, the, from your childhood. Um, the minute you see that stuff, you're, you're instantly transported back home. And that's, I just can't wait to get there. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Love Tsunami is the new darts release. It's a three song EP. It seems like, or it seems to me, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, Nicole, but it seems like keyboards are a bigger presence than on I Like You But Not Like That. They're Interesting more that you say that. Um, to me, they don't feel like they were written to be a bigger presence, but we did this EP for the very first time with a brand new producer. 
Um, usually our producer is Bob Hogue here in, in uh, Mesa at the Flying Blanket recording. In fact, he just is still, as I do this interview, he's currently mixing our latest record called Snake Oil that's going to come out. Um, and he's done literally every record I think that all our other, other bands and everybody has, has done in this, in this, in Arizona. He's just a, a really great, great producer. But for this EP, we wanted to do something different. And um, we have a really good friend here, Gerald Schoener, who has a little studio and wanted to really do this, this three song EP and um, his equipment's great, he's great, his vibe is great. And so we were like, yeah, let's just go do this. And so we went in there and uh, knocked it out in literally just a few hours. And um, it, it, this is all him. It's, so it's got a different sound. It's a different production style for sure. And I love it. Well, yeah, on the title track, it's it's kind of like eerie beach party vibes <laughs> going on there. Right. <laughs> love me, love me, tsunami. Uh, my favorite song of the three is Shit Show. Again, it, it's the keyboards that, that kind of hook you in. If I'm if there's a takeaway from this one is that dating isn't easy. Oh, yeah, that is a uh, kind of a running theme in this band. Um, other than uh well, I guess Mary Rose is, is now drumming for us, but um, as, a, as a rule in this band, um, at least for me and Christina, you know, keeping relationships together isn't the easiest thing in the world. And uh, luckily we have each other to keep each other going and, and the band. But uh, yeah, I think a running theme throughout a lot of our songs is, uh, you know, just kind of leave us alone and we're just going to be who we are and it's, so, it's going fine. <laughs> And tell me this isn't the feel good song of the summer. This is a shit show, a shitty shit show. It's just a shit show, a shitty show, and I'm out. It's, it's the pandemic in a nutshell. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> gather around, gather around, family. We're going we're gonna to sing a song together. That's right. It's a nice, heartwarming family song. <laughs> yeah. This is a shit show, a shitty shit show. I, I give you that I wasn't totally creative on those lyrics, but I love it though. Hard. <laughs> it's, you know, in the modern day, it's so important to be your authentic self and you're doing just that. <laughs> the frustration was there. It was real. <laughs> so Indianapolis Friday, Liars Club on Saturday. How does it feel to be just back in that group? Oh my gosh. Um, it's been literally two and a half years since we have done a legit tour and um uh, yeah, like every band I know, we've been going crazy and bored and sad and writing our heads off, trying to fill the hours with with something meaningful because the you know music is our lives. And um, finally, to put this together and to have a new little EP to run out there with on Picture Disc um, for the first time. Um, these picture discs are really cool too. They're, they're I was going to ask that lathe, lathe cut discs that um, Precarian cuts down in Tucson does. He literally does every single one by hand, and we just press seventy five, you know, copies. Just it's super limited, and um, we're just going to have those for this for this tour only available at these shows. And the whole thing is just kind of this amazing um, chance to reach out to our fans and give them something special. With Mary Rose playing drums for us, she's amazing, mm -hmm. and she's just locked in with us so easily. Still, she's one of the family now. It's just amazing how how well she's just fit in completely with us. Um, and I just can't wait to to be out there and, and sweat on everybody again. It's gonna be great. And Mary Rose also has an almost effortless charisma. Oh her. my gosh, that, that is exactly the word. Um, even in the recording studio, we we just spent you know two weeks with her. Um, putting this new record together. She learned all the songs in, I don't know, a month and then plus 10 more songs for our tour. And um, she's just a, a, this unbeatable work ethic that you just don't find in people these days. And people probably don't, rec don't see that in her because she's so cool, you know, but behind the scenes, she is a workhorse and she takes it really seriously. She's an amazing musician. Um, and yeah, when she gets on stage, she sells it. It's just great. She's like one of us. It's fantastic. Well, you know what that work ethic is? That's that's just Midwestern stuff right there. You know, I'm not going to argue with there. I, 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 having lived on the West Coast, no offense to my West Coast brothers and sisters, but there is something about the Midwest that I don't know if it's the snow or what, but it makes you work. <laughs> it does. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the lathe cut picture discs. Are you a vinyl fan? Are you? Oh, yeah. Is it a big deal to have darts music on, on record? That you could throw on a turntable. Yeah, um, I did a stint running um, 
Dirty Water Records, uh, US arm for a while here out of Phoenix. And before that, we had our own, the, my last band, the Love Me Nots, had our own label called Atomic Go Go. And literally everything I've ever pressed has been done on colored vinyl because I think it's gorgeous and I think it mm -hmm. sounds great. And um, um, this is my first picture disc. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And you mentioned there's a full album on the way, yes. Snake, Snake Oil. Is everything basically in the can for this? Is this just kind of ready yeah. to go? Pretty much. Uh, we just heard um, the first 10 of 13 masters today, and they sound incredible. Um, Jello Biafra from Alternative Tentacles, our label, is personally overseeing this whole project. He's, he's weighing in a lot on, uh, on every song, every track, the song order, the mix. Um, literally right down to the bass tone and the, and the Farfisa tone. And um, he's just really involved and um, there's been really no substitute for that. He's, you, you can't, and I've never done this before where I've made a record or written a song with that kind of oversight. And um, to have that kind of input has been really priceless. So this will be a really epic record for us. It's, it's gonna sound bigger darker and and richer than anything we've done before i guarantee you that oh i i'm into it and snake oil just for the name that sounds like something born of the era we're in we were surrounded by snake oil salesmen hucksters charlatans is Big that where you're going with this oh yeah um it, it represents it symbolizes so many things to me um um, just on a side note, I gave up drinking a few years ago and during the, during the pandemic and everything just for health reasons. And, um, I also thought that even that, you know, it was a form of snake oil, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it's good to get away from and to sort of clean, clean our act up and, and focus on what's real and what's true and what's meaningful. And to me, that was my band and my family and get back to what, what matters. And, um, it's really paid off. So, so that's what this, this, this whole record is, is about that. Awesome. And we'll hear those songs or a, a chunk of those songs. I'm assuming at Liars Club. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, I would say half the set is all new stuff that people have not heard live before. Fantastic. Okay. And then I mentioned, I like you, but not like that. Mm -hmm. The title track that for inspiration, you turn to creepy DMs on Facebook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not that we get a million of them or anything. I don't want to say we're that we're that band, but everybody gets them right once in a while. I'm sure you do too as a celebrity. And um, we're not celebrities, but every now and then something creeps through. And uh, yeah, we were on tour in Europe somewhere in I think southern France, and uh, we were getting in the van after a long night and uh one of us i can't remember even who it was looked at the phone and said oh my gosh i got one of those i like you but not like that text or something like that. <laughs> and it just took off and literally in the van uh after a few too many i think uh we were all just spitballing ideas and the lyrics just were written i think by the time we got back to the hotel that night it was just done and uh so it's it was very much uh, just a fun project for all of us just to write that together the more important Facebook question, of course, being, did you get your $400 from Facebook for the theft of your biometric data? Uh, no. <laughs> Which is why people should go out and see you at Liars Club and buy the lathe cut. That wow. would be wonderful. That would be <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Uh, gas is expensive these days, as oh, we all know. Own. So uh, yeah, anything you can do to help the tour, we're, we're very grateful. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that aspect of touring right now. It's crazy. In fact, we have, um, after this U.S. tour, we're going to, you know, like you said, Indy and Chicago and Detroit. But after that, we also do um, Boston and Philly and Brooklyn and Portland and Tacoma and um, Seattle and, and Phoenix. And then after that, we go to Scandinavia. And then in October, we go all over Europe. And when you start adding up the expenses uh, for, you know, finding a place to stay every night and finding... Yeah um to you know roadie crew help um and and gas money and all that it was expensive before for any band to do this sure. likely we've been able to do it but now for any band that's out there on tour i guarantee you their costs have doubled and so for those of you who go out and see bands and support them i can't thank you enough that's you're the only thing making it possible truly i love it well the, what a fun band what a cool band the darts <laughs> at liars club 
Saturday night, Memorial Day weekend. I mean, this is what a holiday weekend was made for. The darts were made for the holidays. <laughs> Really? You know, I can't agree more. We're like a, a permanent holiday when we get together. We have the most fun you will ever see any band have. I've ever seen any band have is us. We, our whole purpose was to get together with this band and have fun. And that's what we try to do every single day.